Oh, there we go. Well, we're, we're recording. Uh, hi, Peter. Hi, Manny. How are you? Hi, Mark. I'm just ducky tonight. <laughs> um, so there's only the three of us, but we'll just do you guys' pictures. And the way this works is I'm going to bring the pictures up in Photoshop and I'm going to share my screen. Okay. And then uh, you guys are going to critique each other. Okay. Uh, and I will throw stuff in, uh, maybe do some editing. Sound like a plan. All right. So let me go share my screen. Let's see if that helps. I put it farther away. All right. Now, every time I talk, I'm hearing a little bit of feedback come back over the speaker. Yeah, I hear that too. It's not nope. that big a deal. All right. So, man. Ooh, I like that one. Who's the red tulips? Whose are those? Those are Richards. I think that's Richard. That was Russell. He didn't show. That's me. This one's you? This no, the one beforehand. The storm clouds. Before that one. That's Other me one. too. Yeah, these are Peters. Yeah. These are Manny. Yeah. All right. Um I think I'll start on this side tonight. Um, Peter, tell us about the image. Um, okay, I, uh, my girlfriend and I went to St. Augustine for the Christmas holidays, uh, which is America's oldest city or whatever. And we went out on the beach and we just got caught in this freak storm. I mean, it was Thanksgiving, you know, and it just, I mean, it just rolled in out of nowhere. So we got drenched, but um, I had my uh, I had my infrared with me, and I and I took it, and then I used um, uh, you know I I did everything uh, I did uh, you know everything in color, and then I used Silver Effects Pro, and um, and this was just you know part of the sand area there. I mean, it was I got some pretty good shots elsewhere as well on the beach. But um, yeah, so that's that. That's pretty much it. Okay. All right. All right. Um, all right. So Manny, we're, you, you'll be the first one to start on this. Tell us what you think and why. Well, I think the the clouds are pretty impressive. It, it is the first thing that it captures my eyes. Um, just the the contrast of the black and the white and the drama of the of the clouds. It's Impressive. I like it very much. Um, and then just the being venue to this crowd, the, uh, is the, the, like all the, the foliage, the grass and everything is taking you there. Um, I, I, I think the, the, the horizon is kind of in the middle. And, um, I'm not sure if, if that is distracting or is actually a good thing because I, I like it the way it looks. Uh, maybe cutting a little bit more on the bottom because there's a like a stick or something. Uh, where? The first stick. But I think that's a great thing. Those those things are taking you to the to the horizon. That's why I like it. Okay. All right. And then with, with the with the grass kind of folding, it's telling you that the wind is coming and it's really hard. Yep, you're right there. To me, it looks above the clouds. It looks a little noisy. Um, right up in that area, but well, it's not too bad. I remember that we're looking at a smaller version, of course. Yeah size down no it's not bad and and if if you find it a little noisy that it's easy to fix that okay 
All right, so we'll, we'll, we'll address that in a moment, okay? Yeah. Uh, to start off with, uh, let me tell you, this is a very, very powerful infrared image. Uh, the composition is simple. Um, to me, the main subject are the clouds. Yeah. Uh, but we're fighting between the clouds and the fence line. Yeah. Um, and the reason is, is when you compose the shot, you place the fence line really kind of in the middle of the frame rather than on the side. Mm. But if it was going to be, if it was going to really, if this was going to be a powerful compositional element and it was going to be on one side or the other, you would want this. This is your anchor here, okay? You see what I'm talking about? Um, yeah. Yeah. Right. We would want that anchor down here in this corner, which means we would want the fence line to go this way. Yeah. All right. Um, and for the composition, there was no way that you could get that. Yeah. So that means if if you want to have because what we want is we want the fence line pointing into the scene. Okay. Whereas if we did a crop, okay, if we did a crop something like this. Uh, let's make it four by three. Oh, maybe two by three. Yeah, we'll do two by three. All right, so this is as it stands. Now, if we were to crop down a little like this um, and place this fence line on this side, it kind of works at an anchor, but it's really pointing the, the wrong way and it leads our eyes out of the frame. Yeah. So, to use the composition as it is, the fence line needs to be the other direction. It needs to be like this. Follow me? Yep. But then we lose too much of the sky. Right. Yeah. Okay. So, you see, I, what I'm talking about is for the various composition elements and varying ways to look at the image. Yeah. If we change the crop. Uh, maybe to four by five and expand upon it this way. So that we have something like this and it works vertically. I need to, yeah. Well, you, you know, I, this, my thinking was when I took it, I want to have that fence line in there. Like, I, I didn't think about not having the fence line in there i just thought it was i don't i don't know what I, but i remember distinctly thinking oh it, you know that's going to be but now as soon as you tell me leading me out of the picture and everything i totally get it like if i had gone to the right and just kind of shot over that sand you know i i think it would have been because i have these the tall grass coming up and the hill i think it would still be uh, a, a decent image without without the fence up, but I remember distinctly, and now I could see it so clearly. Which this is what I like about something like this, or this lecture I went to last night. Because if you put this on social media, people are like, "Dope shot, man! Those clouds are righteous." You know all this stuff. There's nothing specific. You know what I mean? Right. right. You know they're like. You know, God, God, those clouds are great, beautiful shot. You know, there's nothing, there's no, and I understand that there's just no room for that. And there's, but, but this is like, I mean, it just immediately, I, I can see it, you know, and I, I wouldn't have seen it otherwise. Peter, <laughs> nobody is going to give you an honest critique of your image. Everybody's worried about upsetting everybody else. Yeah. All right. And you're not going to ever learn anything. Now, it, it may, I'm I'm the same way. When people give me nice comments on images on the social media site, it makes me feel good. But then I realize you can take their comments, you know, with two cents. Yep. Because yep. you're not going to get anything that you're going to learn from. All right. All right. I agree. The fence line is very powerful, but we need it leading our eyes into the frame. Totally. We, whether it leads in from the lower right hand corner or the lower left hand corner yeah and since the fence line is going from right to left it can't be on the left hand side right okay 
So the only answer to that is, is the crop. And whether we choose to do it vertically or horizontally, I mean, we do have some options in this. I mean, we even this works, and yeah. this gives us a little bit more sky, yeah. to, but we really need that dark line above it. Yeah. Um, and it works. It, it's a beautiful image, but I, I think, and as much as I would like a horizontal crop like this, mm -hmm. uh, the vertical crop is just, it works better. Because I yeah. don't, I don't want this anchor point to be on the one third line. Yeah, I really don't. We want it to be over here towards the corner. Yeah, it does make a, it makes a difference. Just that little bit does make a difference. Because yeah, we need, we need some separation between this post and the edge of the frame. Yeah, but we don't want to crowd it either. We don't want to do this. Right. All right. Oh, yeah. Let me undo that. Um, so just somewhere along here like this, and that makes a powerful image. Um, we've got the wonderful leading line of the fence. We've got the sand. We still have the, the sea oats here being blown in the wind. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Had you walked 10 feet to the left and recomposed, yeah. then we could have done this. Follow me, because what we really need oh, yeah, yeah. for a horizontal shot, for this to work, that's kind of what we need right there. Yep. We need, you know, we need this part of the frame to be here, and that would have meant, you know, just walking a few feet to the left. Yep. And having seen the fence line and realizing that it was angled from left or from right to left, we know that this is going to be more powerful as an anchor point on the right hand side got it so that means you got to move to the left got it um now Mark, yes could you have taken that picture like instead of walking to the left walking to the right so that the path is the the fence on the grass and then shooting more towards the left so what what do you want you, you wanted to, to go this uh, way we're going to do it on this one but if if the shot was taken more towards the right, no, because the fence line is still angling from the right to the left. It's pointing out of the frame. What we wanted to do is to point it right into the frame. We wanted to go from from the lower uh, left hand corner to the upper right hand corner. Yeah, no, that's what I was thinking. If if, if but, uh, like if I was taking the picture, I would have walked more towards the right and, and shoot more towards the left. Yeah, again, this this fence line would be angling out of the frame and take her eyes off the edge. Okay. All right, because see, as it stands here now, or are you talking about moving more towards the right? Like Not on this one. Like, like if I was taking the picture right now, um, if I would have taken it more towards the right, so, Over that, here. so that the grass and the and the fence are pointing to the left, and then I would have taken more more clouds on the left. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I see what you're saying. Yeah, you could do that. It would just re require moving to get the fence line angle correct. But yes. Oh, okay. Yeah, you're saying move to the right and point the camera more to the left. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you can do that. Because that way you wouldn't have this problem. Or... Right, that, that's why I was saying here, because he didn't shoot far enough to the left. Right. There's no data here. Yep, yep. Good. good point. Okay, so let's, now let's look at one more thing. Let me undo the crop. Now you were talking about the noise. Yeah, I mean, it, it looks like it from, to me, from the naked eye, it just. In this dark area up here. Yeah, yeah. Well, what I would do is just do a, do a mask, just do a selection like this, so that we just have the top part of the frame, okay? Yeah. 
Um, then run uh, define from Nick. Okay. And we're going to run it in the manual mode. Okay. So I'm going to select from automatic to manual, and then I'm going to put uh, the selection areas just in the not on the clouds just in these real dark areas and this slight gray area and in the slight gray i'm just going to put a very small uh, selection area it's so the larger the selection area the more it affects the overall picture and then we'll measure the noise and now we're going to test it and i'm seeing a little bit of salt and pepper before and none after let's go down here and look yeah uh yeah big change in here see the bottom yeah, yeah. all right yeah. just that simple and then say okay and because i was only selecting these dark areas yeah all I, right I can, yeah I can uh, see the difference to me. It's just that simple. This is a very, very powerful image. You did a really good job on this. Thanks. Uh, this will make a lovely print. But when you do, I would, I would do a vertical crop if, if you, you know, if, if you agree. Yeah, I totally, I totally see it. Totally. Okay. Yeah. All right. So we're gonna quit that one. Now let's go look at one of Manny's. Oh, I like those clouds. High whiffs. Yep. All right, Manny, tell us about this. So um, this is in Teotihuacan. This is the Avenue of the Dead, and it's walking towards the Pyramid of the Moon. Um, so I, I love this place. This, to me, I like Mesoamerican culture, and I'm always fascinated by the Teotihuacan culture. And that's why I go there as much as I can. Um, but this is the really first time I really want to take better pictures of it. Mm -hmm. um, and I was having a hard time trying to not do it like in the center, in the center. Um, but the problem was with the, with the two columns on the sides that lead you to the pyramid of the moon, I wanted to capture them. Mm -hmm. And that's why I ended up doing it kind of in the middle. Okay. Uh, and then I kind of put also the horizon in the middle because I want to show the big distance that is between where I was and the actual pyramid. Okay. Um, now, now, is this infrared? Uh, no, this was uh, regular. Okay. So I treated in color and they converted it black and white with, uh, with silver. And did you use a filter? Yes. Which one? A polarizing filter. Did you use a, um, a silver effects filter as well? Uh, yes, I use the uh, thing the gel because of the uh, the problem with this is when you see the color one, there's really no separation of colors because most of it is gray. Okay. So I was trying to get more uh, of the darkness of the clouds and somehow get lighter tones on the grass or well not on grass on the floor so that the pyramid will stand out all right let me that's see what i was having a hard time on, on getting this because everything is kind of grayish even if you see the the color one it's the same it's almost all the same color all right you didn't send me the raw image so we can't uh, oh, I'm sorry. I thought oh, I no, that's all right. I was going to show you an easy way to do this without affecting down here. Uh huh. All right. No, I'm. I don't know if cropping it a little bit more will make it better now that I'm seeing it. Okay. All right, um, Peter, your turn. Go quick, tell us. What do you think? I like it a lot. I I love the clouds. The sky. I thought it was infrared actually um but uh it, it, I, I love the cloud I'm a, I'm a cloud freak now so um um i i i do see where where it's kind of uh some of it's kind of flat because of the gray mm -hmm. maybe a little more contrast up front um and 
I don't know. I, I, I think maybe uh, this is maybe um, uh, moving in a little closer. It's it, there's a lot to take in. This, this is just for me. This is just me because you've got people here, and then you've got this other stuff over here. But uh, other than that, I, 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 you know, I mean, that's not a. That's what I see. No, those photos are very good for the National Theater. Um, all right, Manny? Yeah? Um, I understand why you balanced the image the way you did, because you, okay. wanted, you wanted these stairs and this temple and this one. Right. I, 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 I get it. Um, let me zoom out just a touch. So we have some working space. I always hate the computers with people, but oh no no! Sometimes, sometimes people make the picture. Yeah, sometimes they do, and, right. and that's why one thing I like. If you see the people walking, you see how they get tinier and tinier and tinier. Yes. So you yeah, can that's see how, how big the place is. Okay. Uh, what I'm going to suggest for you is something like this. We're going to leave that wonderful sky. We're going to leave some space below. I take it that this is a woman here, but I can't tell on my screen. And without losing that sense of depth, which we've got, we're going to uh -huh. take off this lower section here. Uh huh. Um, because you don't need it to show how big the place is, and sure. it, it's it's space that doesn't add anything to the image. I think it's more disturbing. Yeah. All right. So any anything that doesn't add to the image is unnecessary. Right. So let's just try cropping it. Oh yeah. Like this. All right. Then as far as the the flatness of the gray area. Uh huh. Easy fix. Uh, we'll bring up Viviza. Let me uh, increase the size of this and see the light and dark areas of gray in the field. Uh huh. Let's accent those areas where they're a little darker. Let's make them a little darker yet. Okay. Uh huh. And let's copy that around. Over here, it's a little darker. Okay. Now let's bring back the darkness here. And let's shrink this down so that we're really only affecting the front of this. Um, add some structure. The funny thing about structure is, is it can actually help brighten. I just want to see some detail of those steps, okay? Uh -huh. And it's there. Um, and let's copy it here. And let's copy it over here, right there, because we want those stairs. Let's get a little detail on the face and a little here. All right. Now let's lighten this up. And we'll add a just a small amount of structure like this. Mm -hmm. And we're going to brighten it a little bit more. And there's a bright spot here. See that? Yep, yep. So let's bring this here. And let's shrink it down so that we don't overly affect everything else. Okay. Uh-huh. And let's go here under her feet. Now, let's look at the main building. We've got to be, we don't want too much there, something like that. Yep, yep, yep. All right, let's say okay to that. Let's see what it does. All right, let me make it full screen. Shrink you down. And let's look at before and after, okay? Yep. Yeah, it looks... See how we get more depth in the field? Yes. yes. And now we're seeing detail here 
in here, whereas before they were just totally black. There was wow. nothing there. Yep. Okay. Yep. Now you could take this further. Okay. I mean, uh, there are some great filters in color effects. Uh huh. And there are some wonderful things that we can do here as well. Um, total contrast. Look what it does to the sky. Look at the mood. Yeah. All right. And you know what did you do? What did you do? You just checked the box and that was it? Well, this is showing me before and after. Um, what we're doing is we're looking at the shadows. Oh, okay. I didn't see you move those. That's all I'm saying. I didn't. It just that's that's kind of my default. Okay. Okay. Got it. Um, I'm I'm moving. I'm back and forth before and after. Oh, I'm yeah. Looking for mood. Uh, let's look at the highlights. See the highlights. I'm changing. Yeah. This is. And let's look at the midtones. That's going to affect the clouds more than anything else. In the low area of the sky, see the change? Yeah. yeah. Oh, I like that. That is so moody. It's beautiful. It's great. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. All right. And it was just that simple. Now, we can play with the highlight sliders, too. But honestly, I like I yeah, like I like it like that. Yeah. All right. Hey, uh, 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 Mark, what's the difference between the shadow and highlight uh, on the bottom, the two uh, sliders by themselves, and then the ones oh, above? Um, these are specifically to remove hot spots. Okay. And we don't have any. But now watch the shadows. Okay. So, Manny, you would have to adjust the shadows to where you like them. You want the deep mood or you want a, a little bit more gray in the sky like this? What do you like better? I like it more to be the deep mood. The deep? Yeah. All right. So let's go with that. And let's, let's look at one more thing because you still got the color data here. Yes. And you said the sky wasn't really blue? It was blue. All right. So let's go down to silver. And I just, I'm not saying to add this. I just want to show you a little bit about what the silver will do to this black and white image. Uh -huh. All right. Right now, you see, there's no, if I click the filter on and off, there's no change. Right. And I have the neutral recipe selected. Right. But let's go down and look at the color filters down here. Let's see if those are going to do anything. And we're not getting a lot. You said that you still have the color data. Is that because you have not converted it in Silver FX Pro yet? Well, no, converting it in Silver Here, let me cancel out of Silver. Make this smaller. You see, the mode is still set to RGB color. Okay. That means that the color data is there, but because we've got a black and white conversion on top of it, it is telling uh, Photoshop to display it as monochrome. Okay. Uh, but believe me, uh, there's, there's still color data in there. So when you use those uh, color uh spots or circles whatever you're manipulating whatever color is in there yes but it, it's too equalized to give us any change on this image uh -huh. right all right um so now let's look at before and after i'm going to turn them both off here's the original uh after the crop and then we ha have our visa changes cool bringing in detail into the dark areas mm -hmm. and highlighting the tonal differences in the field all right then we bring our tonal contrast to bring out the sky hmm. yeah 
And after we're all done, we may want to look at noise again. See, what we did to the sky brought out a little noise. Uh huh. So what we do is we'll go to a negative. We'll slide this down. And we are going to go in and select the sky and come down to right about here. All right. And I'm going to run to find on this. Well, let's see what it does here. See, just the, the default took most of that noise out. But I'm going to, in the manual, I'm going to put just a small selection here, a small one here. A tiny one here in this gray. All right. And that should be enough. Let's measure the noise. Now let's go look. Look at the difference. Wow, what a difference. But yet, see, it's only affecting those areas that I selected. Now, Mark, again, yes. Quick question. Um, and I, I didn't recognize this before, and lately I've been seeing it. Uh, when I bring up define, uh, it has there's already like a square like in, like there is in this far on the far right hand side there's already a square down in where it says loop and and is it is is that mean that it's just concentrating on that area because I don't know how that happened no the automatic code yeah it's going to scan the image and look for what it thinks is noise okay okay put squares in those areas. No, but the, this one, this one that it's it's just hanging out on the right hand side. This is just a sampling square. Okay, got it. Okay, got it. All right. Yep. So we'll say okay. Let it do its magic. Take away that. Um, and now all of that noise is gone. Yeah. All right. So let's save as. We'll, we'll change it to edited. Back there with those layers in there, okay? Uh-huh. All right. Oh, this one's got some noise in it. Look at that. Yeah, a lot. <laughs> uh, let's look at that picture real quick. Actually, we're going to jump back uh, to Peter's. We'll come back to this one in a minute, okay? All right, Peter, let's hear about this. Uh, so this is a this is a, a peer. Actually, it's privately owned on, uh, um, and uh, it was already uh, it was for sale for like seven million bucks. It was already kind of decrepit. Anyway, we've got a, we, you know, we got a storm came through. It wasn't a tropical or anything like that, but the winds are pretty high. And the next day I saw online that that happened. So uh, I, we went there, it's about 10, 15 minutes from, from my girlfriend's place. And uh, you know, we, and that's, you know, that's the shot I got. I, and I tried to see it in black and white. I thought that would make a good um, photo. I used silver on it and, it didn't. I just kept so I just kept it like this, and um, yeah. So that's it, really. Okay. But I kind of see now where I don't know that cutting just right across the middle of the image. It's almost like I. It almost like it stops me right there. Maybe if I had moved over to the right a little bit more or something. I, I don't know. Showed more of the pair. Yeah, I mean, it just it's just it's just like bam right there. I mean, it doesn't have a lot of depth to it because of the angle that I took took it at. Well, it's, it, 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 still works. it still works. Okay. Um, I like the slow moving rollers too. Um, Manny, your turn. Yeah, uh, I like it. Um, I get, the only thing would be maybe. Putting some of the of the uh, foam of the water on the front, because that that kind of distracts you from the from the pier. I think the wave maybe a little bit below the wave, because the wave adds to it. 
but the rest, I think it, that's the only thing I think of. Okay. All right. So this is 590 nanometers. Yep. And you didn't have any plant life, so you have nothing in here to turn uh, uh, gold or orange or red. Correct. And obviously the water is close to, in real life, it's close to as blue as you can get. Yeah. All right. All right. So let's look at this for a second. Did you add the vignette? I did. Okay. Maybe a little bit too much, actually, but. No, yeah, it's, it's all. Now when I kind of see it, there's I don't think there's a, enough of a separation of the, enough of a contrast between the blue of the water and the blue of the sky. I mean, there is a contrast, but. No, you don't, you don't need separation. Okay. All right, no, no, this, this works. It's, this is a good, it's a good image, it's a good composition. But I'm thinking like Manny, that maybe, there is just a little bit too much foam in the foreground. Okay. Oh, I see what you mean. Yeah. Okay. So if mm -hmm. we drop it down to a panoramic, mm -hmm. all right. Yeah. I, I, I think that adds to the image a bit. Yeah. yeah. Good call, Manny. That definitely makes a difference. Um, and I, I don't mind the vignette. Um, it's it's a little strong, but you know that's just personal. Uh, that's just personal taste. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Um, let's look at a couple other things real quick. Let's bring Vivisa into play. Let's look at the surface of this water real quick with negative structure. To make it more milky, more uh, like a little bit smoother. Uh huh. So you're saying take away some of the structure then? In the water. Yeah. So it almost looks like a yeah. Like okay. it was a long exposure with a filter. Yeah. To yeah. Make it like a mirror. I don't know why it had that look to begin with. That smoother look. I don't. I don't. It was. Is this this isn't on the golf, right? It is. All right. Well, the golf is typically smoother than the Atlantic by a whole bunch. Okay. Uh, so now let's look at this this water here. Well, uh, we do have a little bit of blown out here, but this is a tough thing. I'm going to take away just a little bit of brightness here, like ten or fifteen percent. Where on the where the wave is, or where the, the it's breaking. Oh yeah, yeah. All right, and I'm going to add a, a, a bit of structure so it doesn't appear blown out. Okay. So we we can yep. we can cheat that back. See what I'm okay. saying? Yep, I see it. Bien, aquí con Mark. We're just cheating that. ¿Qué pasó, mi amor? All right. So I I see I didn't look at that and go oh that's blown out so so what did how did you decide okay that it's blown out you know I what I mean? the white whites and if there's no detail in it whatsoever okay got it okay and I was just looking to bring a little bit of detail in okay um and there's probably no data here yeah. Uh, but let's look at that real quick. Let's see if I, oh yeah, there is some data there. We'll shrink that control point down. I'm going to bring, Ooh. I don't I don't want too much, okay? Right. Just a, a hint, just a hint that there's something inside that structure. Yeah. Just a tease. Yep, that's it. Just a tease. Yeah. And now let's look under here. With just yeah, there's a little there. There's not a lot. 
I also desaturate a lot of a lot of the wood uh, on in my pictures. I don't think I did it here, but oh no, uh, that, that's a, that's a valid artistic tool. There, I'm, see, I'm just going to bring in a little brightness under yeah. here to try and bring out some detail in these. There, see what I'm doing? Yeah, just a little bit of detail. Um, mm. not, not on the sky, but. And there might yeah. not there might not be a lot here to bring in uh, what have they decided what they're going to do with this pier they're going to demolish it well that's a shame yeah you need to get out here and shoot it again okay uh, this this is a treasure while you've got this yeah okay I'm going to bring out a little bit of structure in the cloud because I don't want any in the blue sky. Right. Well, those are pretty clouds too. Yeah. It was weird because the just a few hours before, I mean, it was crazy. Yeah. Now let's let this crunch. All right. Now let's look at before and after. Okay. Okay. Yeah, definitely. Little, little tiny changes. Yeah. Notice the difference right here as I go back and forth. It looks good. Yeah. And in, in inside the building, see, there's just a hint that there's yeah. something in there. That's all you need. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Um, and like I said, this is, this is a little strong up here. Yeah. Of course, now that we've cropped it, it makes this a lot stronger. Right. Okay. Yeah. So. I just, uh, you know, I normally don't vignette, but I wanted to try it, you know? Oh, yeah. No, a little, a little bit of vignetting can go a long way. Yeah. All right. This is a nice image. You did a good job on this. Very much. Thank you. All right. And then one last one. All right, Manny. Tell us okay. about this. That one, it was just hard to do. I just love that uh, um, dragonfly. And it just stayed there. And I was trying not to scare it so it wouldn't move. So I couldn't remove that little stick that is coming through. And the problem is, and that's where I have the problem with this picture. I took it like, I took five different ones and all this, it was the same. Yeah. Um, the structure, because of the, because of the winds, you cannot see the winds. And that's why it has so much noise. I was trying to get more of the wings and less of the behind it. Mm -hmm. and I could, but that's what I, I was trying to Okay. Peter? Um, can I, I can't see the image. Uh, I can't, yeah, there it is. Okay. All you so, have to do, yeah, all you have to do is click on my feed. Oh, okay. Screen. Okay. So, um, yeah, I, I actually did not know what that was at first because I just, I, I, I didn't look hard enough because of the wings, like you said, which are hard to do i would think you know at least from that angle and um i i, I <clears throat> um this it's not his whole body and and it's right in the middle of the of the image and it's just i don't know it's a, it's a little wonky to me for that reason um So that's, yeah, that's pretty much it. Okay. okay. Manny, how, how would you improve this? How what? How would you improve this? I probably would have taken the, the shot on a different angle rather than taking it from top. Maybe taking it lower down, like down up. Okay. Get... Is this on a picnic tabletop? Uh, it was, probably it was um, 
uh, a bench. Okay. So where's the back of the bench that people put their back against? Is the dragonfly facing it or is he is his butt facing uh, it? You know, I don't remember. Okay. I don't remember. Um, I think the back is towards me, towards the bottom. Okay. All right. All right. Well, the first thing I would have suggested that when you went and, and took this image, is that when you're shooting an insect like this, uh -huh. no matter whether you're shooting up his butt or up his eyes, uh -huh. you need to get the entire insect in the frame. Yeah. I had yeah. others that had the whole insect. I just, that was the first one. I used to put it because I had the same problem with all the other ones. So, but I had the whole thing. I, I, had, I was able to get the whole body. Okay. So now, if, if you're unable to get the whole body, rather than doing the entire insect, uh -huh. um, maybe, doing a detail shot. Like this. All right. Uh -huh. Or uh, the be the wings are better on this side, aren't they? Yeah. Like this, and and work in the detail area, and get a more intimate portrait of the insect. Uh huh. Uh huh. But whenever you're shooting up the back of the bug. You're losing the essence of life. Life is in the eyes. Right. And, and uh, on this one, after you took a couple pictures here, I would have walked around to the other side and shot into him. And the nice thing about the dragonfly, and this is why you can do this, is the da dragonflies like their perches. Okay? Uh-huh. And... Even if you scare them away and you, you walk around to the other side, so you're shooting down towards his eyes, uh -huh. he's going to fly right back to that same perch again and again and again. Hmm. They select their perches and they use them out of habit. And they will chase other dragonflies away from their perch because it's theirs. I didn't know that. Yeah. So you could have taken your shots here and then moved around to the other side and shot down at this angle, okay? Uh -huh. um, or this angle here from, from an angle so that we're still seeing the, the face of the eye. Uh -huh. All right? Um, because you're going to get a more intimate uh, image, a more intimate portrait of, of the insect. I see. Um, and I understand what you're talking about as far as the um the wing and trying to bring out the details uh -huh. and adding sharpness is not going to help yeah um in, in the in the future although there is something you can do we can zoom in tight and you can go to Vivisa and you can add a control point oh, nice. these wings yeah Okay, um, let me give you an example of that. And we will zoom in here. Uh, see, we have plus zoom. Yes. And we'll just, we'll go in tight on the wings so that we can better place the control points, okay? Uh-huh. And then deselect the zoom, select a control point, and using this, this, this selection panel here, uh -huh. So we can get this place properly. We want that crosshair right on the white. Okay. Uh huh. And then we'll add brightness and structure to the white. And then we're going to drop another control point here in the areas where the noise increased. Uh huh. And we're going to bring those areas back to the dark. And we're going to reduce structure 
to try and take away a little bit of that noise. Uh -huh. uh, so that is, that is a trick that you can do also. But you can also use Photoshop sharpeners on these things too. The sharpeners that act on the contrast edges. Um, do you ever use any of these? The only one I have used is the unsharp mask. Yeah, unsharp mask or sharpen edges. Um, those would be the two that I, that I would use. The unsharp mask, you, you, you know how that works. Yeah. All right. Uh, let's take the amount down. Oh, let's say to around 100. And as we increase the radius, we increase overall image noise. So we, at 100, I'm going to take the radius down to about 1. All right. Uh, but we're, th there's so much noise in here. We're just, see, it's affecting the color noise as well. All right. All right, so that, that's, that's just too noisy. Um, another thing you could have used if you could have turned on flash. True. To hide that, the flash would have caught the gossamer membrane yeah, over that, the wing and yeah. given you reflections off the wing to make it stand out more. Right. Okay, what camera did you use for this? That was the Nikon, the 7100. Okay. And that's the infrared. I don't remember what uh, filter I had. Okay. Yeah, tough picture. Yeah, and that's what I was, after I took it, I saw it, it was like, but I was trying to capture it the way I was seeing it, because, I mean, you could see the, the different violets and blues of, of the dragonfly when I was there. And, uh, so I, I didn't think about it. I would just just shoot, and after that, then I started thinking, well, I should have done it a different way. Well, do you have? Did you have your color camera with you? No. It what kind of what kind of lens was that? I mean, uh, I'm... that was the um, huh? I don't remember. If I it, it was probably the eighteen two hundred. Nikkor. Chances are it was that one. It was, you know, 200 is enough. Uh, but when you're dealing with dragonflies. That's what I was trying to do. Yeah, really, 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 really want to shoot their eyes, okay? Yes. Now I learned my lesson. Okay, so this is what we're looking for. We're looking at sharpness. I don't care about anywhere else in the scene. This is what we're looking for. Yes. Sharpness in the eyes, okay? Uh-huh. Um, and if you if you use a low aperture, you can blur that background and that's gonna make the wings stand out more. See here? Uh-huh. Um, and it just it's it's easy to do, but what's hard is getting in front of the bug. Yes. All right. Uh, but you're going to get a much better shot from an angle. Yes. Okay. Uh, so you really want to approach. And like I said, watch, stand there and watch them. They are going to fly around and they're going to come back to the same perch again and again and again without fail. That's good to know. All right. Uh, but that's why I want to put that one because I know that was a terrible shot and I want to know how to make it better. Yeah, on that one, you really need to go out and chase some more, um, chase some more uh, dragonflies around this summer. Yes. All right, and like I said, just take a chair, a tripod, all right, and watch them and notice where they land and then when they're gone, go set up your chair and. Uh, composed on the branch where they're going to land. Now, they won't always land facing you. Sometimes they'll face the other way, but they're always going to come back to that same perch again Perfect. and again and again. Perfect. All right. So, uh, so would you, 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 what kind of lens would you use for that? Like, I mean, you wouldn't, 
have to use a macro lens? I'm not sure how to get that tight on a bug. Um, what, what you need is like a, um, a 100 to 400 uh, with an extension tube on it. Okay. Like a 25 millimeter extension tube, which will, which will move your, your um, it'll move your, your closest focus point closer and allow you to physically move the camera closer to the bug. Well, I never heard of the extension tube. How does that work? Um, what it is, it's just a hollow tube with no glass in it that goes between the lens and the camera. Uh -huh. It increases the, magnif the ma magnification okay. of the image circle against the sensor because it increases the, the, the diameter of the image circle so the sensor sees a smaller part of the overall image. Uh -huh. All right. And it decreases your infinity point so that you can physically, it, it, it compresses the focus range of the lens so you can physically focus closer as well. Okay. Uh, they're, they're relatively inexpensive. To buy a set of three is going to cost a hundred to one hundred and fifty dollars, depending on oh. your camera system. If you're shooting an autofocus lens or an electronic control lens, you want to make sure you buy extension tubes that have communication to the lens. They have the contacts. Oh, okay. And they're inexpensive, but they will enable you to get closer. Very good. Okay. Yep. Um, so I'll put these images back up on the group drive in a few minutes. All right. Yep. Uh, did any of this make sense? Did any of it, did, did it help? And how do you feel about critiquing each other? That's good. It, it helped a lot. Thank you. And, you know, you know, yeah, the one thing I like of this is I know what I have to look at my pictures because that's, I think, my, my difficulty is knowing when the picture is good or bad. And so doing it this way is learning, helping me pay attention to that. Yeah, and just like I said, go, get out and shoot. Um, Manny and Peter, you're both infrared shooters. Yes. But you should be carrying a color camera with you when you're out in the field. Okay is you just don't know what's going to give you your best results for the scene that you happen on by chance. Yeah. But it's best if you have both. Now, as a diehard infrared shooter, I can tell you that a full spectrum infrared conversion, that you can change the infrared nanometer range by changing the filter on the end of the lens. That's what I have. Yeah. You can also buy a filter to convert that camera back into black and white, or back into black and white, back, no matter, back no into a normal color. Yeah, I have, I have that one. All right. I, so I have the one that goes inside and the one that goes screwed to the lens. Yeah. So one camera will enable you to do all the infrared and all of your color without having to carry two cameras out into the field. Um, there's something about holding the camera for me i i have rarely used and i know this is a no-no because from a, from the last workshop i've rarely used my tripod when i shoot uh, uh, very most people when they're shooting infrared they have a tendency um to shoot handheld and you know as long as you can get a high enough shutter speed that's going to be fine but you need to be aware that infrared starts to develop noise in the image at higher ISOs. Okay. Especially in the dark areas. Oh, okay. All right. So, so what I try to stick to my native ISO when I'm at Canon, which is like a, uh, a hundred or. Yeah, it's going to be around a hundred probably. That's going to give you the lowest noise for sure. Okay. All right. Yeah, that's why I started shooting with my tripod because I'm pretty shaky, and that way I, I know I'm doing better. Uh, but you might want to consider a full spectrum because it's it's gonna give yeah, you I'm going to give you 590, 665, 720, 800, 830, 850 nanometers all in one camera. Now they cost more. Yeah. Because you have to buy the filters for the lid that you should. Right. And the the 590 and 665 nanometer filters, they're cheap. They're like $20. They're inexpensive. 
because they're the light red and the dark red filter. Well, where do you where do you get those? I mean, would you buy them from uh, from someone other than Kalari or? You, no, you can buy you can buy B plus W off Amazon. Okay, like a Hoya or something like that, it, or uh, it doesn't matter. Um, there's the the light red and the dark red. The light red is five ninety. Okay, and the dark red is six sixty five. Okay. Um, well, that what would about be the uh, what about, W O nine O and O nine one? What What about the um, the one that uh, kind of mimics the uh, Ectochrome? It's five. What is it? Five. Five fifty. Five fifty. Yeah. I like that color a lot. I, yeah, I like you that color. you would have to buy that. From, I don't think anybody's making a five fifty filter except for. Um, uh, you should be able to buy you're, you're talking about uh Kalari's new one okay yeah well, they they probably sell a screw on filter okay always uh with a full spectrum you can even get in camera false color already processed by the camera with an 047B. Now you have to white balance it differently. All right. I For which filter? It's called an 047B. Okay. You know how you do your, <clears throat> your, your false color conversion in Photoshop? Yeah. They come out of the camera already done. And nice. that's, that's with a filter called an 047B. Uh, and I believe that is a Hoya filter. You know, you you're breaking up so bad. I missed a lot of that. So, but I, yeah, I don't. Know. It's just on my end. I'm sure. Yeah. I'm, uh, o O forty seven B in, in a in a full spectrum conversion is in camera false color. Okay, got it. Life Pixel calls it the super blue. Oh, that's the super blue. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yep. But you can do it in the computer too. But if you don't want to, you can you you can invest in a an O forty seven B, and that'll be an expensive filter. Cool. Now, the so it's a separate filter uh, than 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 any of the ones that we're talking about. Yes. Huh. With with a a full spectrum conversion, yeah. we just put a, key, a clear piece of glass on front of the sensor. It lets everything through, and then you program the camera with an external filter on the end of the lens. Right. So whatever lenses you're going to use, you have to have filters that work, that fit it. Yeah. That's why a, a full-spectrum conversion costs more, because you have to buy the filters on top of the conversion. Yeah, okay. So so just, just to be clear then, so let, let's say I have a full-spectrum, and I'm shooting a 590 or something. So out of camera, it's already going to come out the uh, with the false color conversion. No, only if you put an 047B filter on the end of the, your lens. Got it. All right, um, Mark. Um, remember what uh, doing the white balance with my camera? I cannot do the white balance at all. At all. I tried, and it doesn't do it. Um, with what filter? With any filter. I, we try when I was uh, with the uh, with you guys, Jimmy and I tried. We couldn't make it do. I tried, the, the, couldn't make it. I was able to do white balance with the 590. No, no, with the 590. Without the without the filters. What's the filter? What's the camera again? The Nikon D7100. All right, a lot of cameras don't do a, a proper white balance yeah so i did a white balance with a with a great one you know, what no what you need to do is you need to do the white balance um you, you're you're the the target audience of capture one that's what i've been doing that's what i've been doing it with was capture the, one you can use the white balance eyedropper and select any part of the scene that's what i've been doing and that, before that, I was doing it with the Nikon software. Yeah, no, you... Allows to do that. Okay. 
that's all right pretty good okay the other one more question i don't know you notice most of my pictures i think they look okay but to my taste sometimes the 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 focus is like a soft focus rather than a better focus and i don't know how to make it better or if it's just my impression is that uh, is it the same whether you auto focus or manual focus i think it is all right the what that means is the lenses aren't calibrated properly for the ir conversion uh-huh and for that you have to stop down uh smaller than f8 smaller than f8 yeah okay all right pretty good good to know yeah you got to increase the depth of field right okay good to know that why the mirrorless cameras make much better infrared cameras than than uh, DSLRs. Uh, they make what? Say again. They make what? The mirrorless is better for infrared. Is that yeah. what you said? Yeah. There was a sale on the A7 A7 two uh, the two I guess it is A7 A7 R two. Yeah. yeah. Jimmy just got one and converted it to infrared. Yeah, they were on sale at Christmas for like. 900 bucks or something yeah. like that I, was, I didn't jump though but. yeah jimmy jimmy had one converted to 720 and he he says he's getting really good results with it good to know yeah the mirrorless um that, ha that has contrast focusing don't have to be calibrated okay Yeah. And you find those in the in the Sony's um, in the yeah 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 uh, the the A sixty three hundred the A sixty five hundred the A seven R two um, mm -hmm. uh, the Fujis make excellent XT ones XT twos really oh they make wonderful infrared cameras really yes what do, what do they run usually in terms of costs. I I don't know now, but even the XT1 and X, the XT1 XT2, uh, they they have a rangefinder style camera, um, and I don't remember the nomenclature on the cameras, but they're like it. Well, I'm looking at the XT1 uh, body only, which is an older model. Uh, well, a used one on Amazon is like 360 bucks. Oh, yeah, that, that, that would make a great infrared body. Really? But you got to pay attention to the lenses. A lot of the Fuji zoom lenses have terrible hotspots. Okay. Um, I know that I know the original old 35 millimeter lens is an amazing infrared lens. On the Fuji? On the Fuji, yes. Mm -hmm. Cool. All right, gentlemen, I have to get some rest. Yeah. And Thank you guys. You're so very much. tired. This All was right. great. All right. Um, I, let me stop the broadcast. Okay.